Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Davide, as usual, from the Azure SQL PM team. What I want to discuss with you today is this reference IoT architecture that you are seeing uh, on the screen right now. We released it is a really super interesting uh, article a couple of weeks ago and uh, I want to show you how you can actually deploy an end-to-end -end solution that implements exactly what this article uh, shows to you in just a few minutes because uh, we provide the script to deploy all the needed resources uh, to create an end-to-end -end IoT architecture that actually simulates uh, um, IoT device sending events up to 10,000 messages per second uh, so that you can play with it, uh, get confident with it, uh, learn and see how you can apply exactly the same architecture, maybe with some slightly variation to your scenario. So let's, uh, let's start uh, uh, taking a look, uh, first of all, at the code that uh, is also referenced uh, here in the article. The article is amazing. It really describes uh, all the technologies uh, and all the challenges and the issues uh, you uh, and, uh, and, of course, the resources uh, available in Azure that you need to be aware of to create a really scalable IoT architecture using Azure SQL. And I want to stress this out uh, um, quite a bit because uh, um, many um, users still doesn't uh, know that Azure SQL is a perfectly fine, actually it's a great database for uh, doing IoT. Because, uh, for example, with column store index or with in-memory table can really ingest a lot of data quickly and uh, allows you to quickly aggregate also that data in almost uh, near real time. We call this feature HTAP, uh, Hybrid Transactional Analytical Processing. Not only that, uh, um, Azure SQL can easily scale out and up, especially in the hyperscale version. So that really makes it perfect for IoT, but not only for IoT, because this architecture, if you are familiar with this kind of uh, uh, warm path, uh, cold path that you can see in the video, is actually a Kappa or a Lambda architecture, depending on which resources you decide to use. And uh, this means that uh, any kind of ingestion and streaming at scale uh, project, uh, which falls uh, into the Kappa or, or Lambda architecture uh, uh, blueprints, uh, can actually be implemented with uh, uh, the architecture you are seeing right now. Um, so let me let me show you uh, how you can actually do that, as said before, using this streaming at scale repository. It's already available on GitHub. Actually, it's been here for a while. As you can see, I started working on this repository, I would say probably two years ago, and then many people contributed. So right now in this repository, you have a lot of samples that shows you how you can implement Kappa and Lambda architecture using really a lot of uh, combination of the resources you have available on Azure. And uh, to make it easier to understand and to use, uh, we define a naming convention. For example, you can see that uh, the first uh, term uh, is the technology used uh, to do ingestion, event tabs. The second term uh, is um, the technology used to do stream processing, stream analytics. Uh, and the third uh, uh, term uh, is the technology used uh, to host and hold uh, all the process data so that you can query it. In this case, Azure SQL. And this is exactly what I will be uh, uh, using uh, in, the, in the next minutes. So, but then, as you can see, you have really a lot of uh, uh, other options. For example, you can use just Event Tab Capture and Drill, uh, or Databricks and Azure SQL, or Cosmos DB, or for example, SQL DW. So you really have a lot of uh, options you can choose from here. But again, since I want to show how Azure SQL uh, can really be an amazing database for hosting, uh, streaming at scale, IoT, gaming, log ingestion solution, Let's use, of course, Azure SQL. And this time I will be using with Stream Analytics, but another amazing uh, um, implementation of Kappa Lambda architecture, actually with very low latency, can be done using uh, Databricks or even better functions. So you really have a lot of options here, but let's, let's go with the Stream Analytics uh, right now. So once you have cloned your repository, and I already have uh, the repository cloned here, yeah, you can see you have a lot of code. And of course, you, if you want to contribute, just be, please feel free to do so. We will be more than happy to accept uh, PR. Uh, maybe you have a technology we have not uh, implemented yet. So please go on and, and help us. So you just need to execute the create solution. And in each, um, each sample here has the same uh, layout. So you see everyone has create solution. 
And in the create solution, you basically have uh, a lot of options you can specify, but the test type is the one that allows you to automatically define how many messages per second you want to send. So today we'll be testing 10,000 messages per second. Now, this is not the maximum limit you can send with that um, configuration or that uh, uh, set of technologies. Actually, I tested Azure SQL up to 20,000, but um, again, you can go even uh, much higher than that. For just uh, the generic purpose here, uh, we felt that 10,000 is more than enough. And actually, let me let me show you why. Um, because uh, let's open Excel for a second and let's see, uh, let's do some, some calculation. Um, so let's say we have 10,000 message per second, right? Which means that uh, in an hour, we have uh, kind of, uh, let me put some 36, uh, 36 million rows per hour, which for a day, it means that we are going to have uh, almost a billion rows for a day. Now let's move to the code. So I already cloned my um, the repository in my local folder and streaming at scale. So what I want to do right now is select the solution that uh, has Event Hub and then Stream Analytics and then Azure SQL. All I have to do right now is just execute the create solution, but let's first of all execute it without any parameters. You see um, that it gives you some help. So what I want to do right now is deploy my solution with a name, let's say DM IoT001, and then I want to test 10,000 messages per second, and I want to use, in this case, um, Hyperscale uh, to run this test. Uh, I will be using a raw store, but for example, here you, can, you could also use a column store and uh, I will be creating the resource in East US. And uh, this will take a while because it has to deploy a lot. Uh, I mean, like uh, uh, storage, uh, event hub, stream analytics, um, Azure SQL. But in addition to that, it will also deploy the client simulator that will generate, uh, in this case, up to 10,000 messages per second or 10 megabytes per second for how we configure the, the data. Everything is nicely explained here. If you go inside uh, uh, the folder you have uh, chosen to use, here there is explanation of everything. And as you can see, these are the requirements. As, as you saw, all the scripts uh, are done with shell. So you will need uh, or Ubuntu or uh, WSL. And here you have all the information needed to run this, this script. Even if you don't want to install Ubuntu or your machine, uh, in that case, just Docker is fine. Um, you know, it goes through how to set up the solution, configure uh, your account. Uh, of course, make sure that you have enough money in your account, especially if you are testing the 10,000 messages per second, because uh, that will require some uh, resource usage. And then the sample of the data we are streaming. Um, the, the, the simulator uses Spark to generate uh, fake data uh, so that we can still play with it uh, uh, as if it's uh, uh, a realistic um, uh, payload. And here are some explanation uh, on uh, uh, the option you need to, to, to kind of fine tune if you want to change and do your own kind of uh, uh, load testing test. So let's say you want to go to 20,000 messages per second. And uh, that's it. So it will take a while to deploy everything. So I will be back uh, in a minute or two when everything has been deployed. Hello, and here's me back. Uh, um, the deployment has finished. As you can see, it took quite a while, but that contains also a test uh, that we ran at the end of the deployment uh, that took 30 minutes, uh, uh, just the test. So actually the deployment, uh, since this uh, uh, requires quite a lot of resources, uh, uh, takes uh, something around 15 minutes. And uh, let me show you what has been deployed. So, yeah, uh, you can see that we deployed some common resources, uh, a resource group and the storage account, uh, and then the event hub uh, namespace, of course, plus the event hub instance, and we also define a consumer group. And then for the SQL database, we deployed uh, a SQL server and a SQL database. And then we also deployed, uh, um, of course, a SQL script to set up the table and everything needed to set up the database objects. And then we started uh, setting up the processing, which means that we actually deployed uh, 
a Stream Analytics job. And then after that, we started deploying the test client and the test client are a, a series of containers that run Spark and that generate some um, JSON uh, mock data. And then after that, uh, and uh, by the way, we deployed five of these instances, five of these containers, each one generating 2000 events per second. And after that, deployment is actually done. But uh, as part of the solution, we also monitor for 30 minutes, as I said before, uh, the performance. And as you can see here, uh, 600,000 events per second has been generated. Uh, sorry, 600,000 events per minute has been generated, so 10,000 per second. And this is the amount of uh, event that has been ingested in Azure SQL. That, And as you can see, it can easily uh, keep up with the... Uh, uh, with all the messages coming in. Now, what we can do is also go to um, the portal, the Azure portal, and see basically the same resources deployed. So the five generator, and if you go to a generator, you can see here that uh, that is actually working and is generating two megabytes per second or 2000 message uh, per second. And uh, that's why we need five because we want to generate up to 10,000 messages per second or 10 megabytes per second. And then we have event tabs here um, that as you can see is nicely, let's switch to messages, is nicely keeping up, uh, is again ingesting 600,000 messages per second and uh, uh, emitting 600,000 messages per second. Who is consuming these messages? It's stream analytics in our case. And in fact, uh, as you can see here, uh, first of all, again, we have 600,000 message in as an input event and 600,000 message out as an output event. Um, usage or some, uh, resource utilization is really not that high, only 7%, uh, even because um, the query is not really doing a lot. It's basically just uh, adding uh, again, uh, some, some current date time and adding some uh, values, but really not doing a lot. But that's just because we want to simply move data from Event Hub to Azure SQL as fast as possible. Otherwise, we could have had uh, even quite complex transformation here. And then at the end, we have uh, Azure SQL. Uh, as you can see, has already reached uh, uh, 55 <coughs> gigabytes of usage, and the resources uh, are kind of pretty much at the steady level. Uh, log percentage uh, is use the 25 percent cpu let's say 10 percent and data io is basically uh, not even uh, present it's really not an issue so our azure sql is easily keeping up uh, with uh, uh, with the 10,000 message rows per second so as you can see azure sql is really able and that's kind of expected, but I just want to stress this out. It's really able to ingest uh, up to 10,000 messages per second. Actually, you can run query on this. With hyperscale, you can have even have more than one secondary. So you can even do HTAP uh, kind of queries or aggregate queries on the secondaries without affecting the primary. It's really Azure SQL is a database that is really optimal for uh, IoT, gaming, log streaming, uh, in general streaming at scale scenarios. You will find all the resources I mentioned, all the link you need to set this up uh, um, in, uh, in the description below. And that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you want me to cover any topic that you think uh, it's worth to be discussed here. And yeah, let's see you in the other videos.